I don't wanna cuss no more when it's nothing worth fighting for I'm walking out the door, oh well Picking up the keys, I'm gone I'm living out my dreams for sure, baby, yeah Loving the way that I'm living my life Loving the freedom, I'm feeling the vibe Intoxicated, I'm feeling alive Once in my life, I made. Now that the time is gone, I won't be here no more Can't be depending on, it's time to move on from do you hear me now? It's come to an end And there's nothing else left to say Yeah, 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 yeah Alrighty, let's do this um, Today I'm looking at Compressor Which is a compressor plugin uh, From IK Multimedia It is part of the T-Rex range um, and it is an emulation of an Empirical Labs distressor. Now, I don't think that any videos out there are really showing the enormous depth of, of flavours and the palette of sounds and compression that you can get out of this thing. So we're going to really drill into this, man. Uh, and that's why the title of this video is T-Rex Compressor, the big one. <laughs> All right. Um, so this is like partly a tutorial and partly a review and if you're new to compression and compressors um, you can perhaps learn a lot about it from this uh, but I'm also going to put a link to my full-on compressor tutorial series in the description below man um, so check that out all right but you'll learn a bit about a lot about compression from this tutorial as well generally so it's a, it's a tutorial and a review all in one okay and we're going to really dive in deep man we're going to really go for it baby yeah, baby, yeah! All right, so here it is. Compressor. as I said, it's an emulation of the Empirical Labs Distressor. The, uh, there's a pair of Empirical Labs Distressors. Hardware compressor. They're, they're not massively expensive, about 1,500 quid each. Um, it, it is a modern classic. It's probably the most famous of all the modern era compressors. It came out in the early 90s. It's variously described as the Swiss Army knife of compressors or a desert island compressor because it has this vast variety of flavours um, of compression and much more besides. It's called the Dis Dresser because it, it uses distortion circuits uh, as well as compression and so it does distortion and compressing. Dis Dresser, right? Compressor, distressor, right? Distortion, compressor. Now, first thing, this is emulating the distressor, but it's a software plugin, so there's some different features. Um, notice something though, there's no threshold. Like all those early line leveling amplifier type compressors, there's no threshold. So it's got that thing where, you know, you drive it and drive it, and the more you drive it, you, you, the more you get up the knee, and the more you start digging into the threshold, and the more the compression starts coming on. But the ratios behave differently from gentle to really extreme ratios they all behave differently they've all got different knees um, some of them have completely different side chain detector circuit uh, behavior and then there are further switches you can employ that changes the behavior all over again so this unit not only has huge variety as a compressor in its own right plus the ability to add anything from warming to saturation to full-blown distortion with or without compression, but it also will emulate um, some of the key classics. It will emulate, emulate the old LA2A3A old optical type uh, compression, and it will also emulate the 1176 FET compressor. Um, and part of this tutorial review is I'm gonna do some AB comparisons with the 1176, and you can really hear the accuracy of that. It also does the, um, at the flip of a switch, it does the all buttons in, 1176 trick and it will even give you the um, flavor of the uh, DBX over easy type thing right so it's massively versatile this so let's start with it um, on BV so we're gonna look at it on loads of different stuff hence this is you know the big one um, we're gonna look at it starting with vocals and then we're gonna look at it on a 808 kick I've got here and a sub bass on this arrangement uh, and then we're gonna go on and look at it on a really banging club type bass and drum loop um, and then acoustic guitar 
And then finally, we're going to look at it on acoustic drums, in, including this trick it does where at the flick of a switch, it gives you an instant monster John Bonham drum sound, and uh, much more besides, OK? So buckle up. Here we go. Um, we can start with it on these backing vocals. Four BVs, they're going to a group bus, and that group bus is being compressed by this compressor. And it's panned left, and then a copy of that group bus is being sent out on an auxiliary send to a return channel, which is panned right, and it's slightly delayed as well. So that is spreading the vocals across the mix. But both sides are going through this compressor. And I've got it set in optical mode. All right. And um, it's it's this optical mode is where it's emulating the LA-2A 3A Type 5. It's beautiful for vocals. It'll work on much more material besides, but vocals particularly, I love it on. Now that the time is gone, I won't be here no more. Can't be depending on, it's time to move on from. Now that the time is gone, I won't be here no more. Can't be depending on, it's time to move on from. The time is gone, I will be here no more. It's just tracking those vocals beautifully. You know, it's it's um it's a fast attack but not so fast that it's 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 letting the, the attack of the vocals through, it sounds natural. It's it's on a really fast release, but the character of the release with this optical ten to one is it jumps out of the way and then backs off. Um so it's just sort of program dependent, it follows the material around. Um, as I said, when you're in optical with 10 to 1, the side chain behaves differently, and so does the attack and release. Now, what's strange is uh, it's emulating, as I said, the old classic LA2A3A type vibe. And on the hardware unit, let's reset, you switch it into optical mode with a manual switch, then you manually stick it on 10 to 1, and then you slam the attack to the absolute longest of 10, and the release to the, to the shortest of 0. And you're in optical mode. Well, handily with this plugin, you just bam hit the optical button, and it does all that for you. Okay. Now the other thing is um, this is emulating the distressor, and in the distressor manual, if you're working in optical mode, it recommends you put the high pass on the side chain on, and on the on the hardware unit that is fixed. And we can type these figures in for the frequencies on these side chain EQs. We can. Um, set this at 106 106 hertz okay so that would be how you'd have it set for the hardware unit all right the high pass on the hardware unit is fixed at 106 hertz okay now what's odd though is it's emulating the la2a3a type 5 now and those compressors have an incredibly fast attack in, in microseconds but yet we've got the attack at the absolute longest Okay, well now this is emulating the distressor. If you set it in optical with the attack at longest like this, the attack is actually at 20 milliseconds. Okay, but that is still way far uh, slower than, than an LA-2A uh, attacks, but the, it's the, 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 those opticals have got a different behavior. So it's not like sort of attack boom, and compress, like compress, compress, it's, it's different. But on this um, plugin, there are yellow bands on the attack and release, which linked to the optical and this is just telling you yeah you can go faster on the attack than that 20 milliseconds but stay within the yellow band same for the release you can back that off a bit but stay within the yellow markers and you're still on the money for that optical old school flavor so i can i can shorten that attack and we'll get more game reduction for the same input because it's coming on quicker all right Time is gone, I won't be here no more Can't be depending on, it's time to move on from Now that the time is gone, I won't be here And you can hear it squishing quicker, it's, com it's coming in with the compression quicker It's slightly taking away that natural edge of the start of the vocals Now that the time is gone, I won't be here no more Can't be depending on, it's time to move on from Personally, I like it on the sort of stock setting 10-0. You can back the release off a bit. Okay, it's, start, it's holding on to the release a bit more. But the way this release works um, is it, it it always jumps out of the way 
once it's compressed a lab bit, it just goes up and gets out of the way really quick, and but not all the way out. It jumps out of the way so that you get some return, you get some bounce back, and it's got the life still. It's not squashing and holding. It's squashing, letting go, squashing, letting go. It lets go, and then but only a bit, and then backs off slowly. Okay, and it's program dependent. Oh, to a certain extent, you know, because those opticals, like the more you're driving it, the more you're lighting that optical lamp, um, if it, it, it sort of starts taking a charge and it decays, the lamp goes off slower, which makes the release a little bit longer in terms of its initial jump back. And then tailing off after that can, can last longer as well. And the attack changes uh, if you keep driving it hard. But yeah, it's, it's like you can back this off a bit and it's really subtle, but what you'll here if you can hear it. You're gonna need good headphones for this, right? Now that the time is gone, I won't be here no more. Is if even if I hold that release just a little bit more, you hear that time no more, the S's a little bit less because it's holding on to that compression, not quite jumping out of the way as quick to let those S's through. Now that the time is gone, I won't be here no more. Can be depending on it's time to move on from so on the is time to you hear it a bit less if it because it's just clinging on that little extra now that the time is gone i won't be here no more can be depending on it's time to move on from now that the time can be depending on it's time to move on from now that the time yeah, very nice mode. I love this for vocals, but it worked great on acoustic guitar, drums, anything. Um, and you know, the, these you drive it a bit more, and it, it'll warm things up. You know, but if you drive it really hard. Now that the time is gone, I won't be here no more. Can be depending on it's time to move on from. The time is gone, I will be here no more. You can really hear it sort of breaking up now with a fast attack and a hell of a lot of hammer. Now that the time is gone, I will be here no more. But even when you're driving it hard, it still comes on, gets out of the way, comes on, and it doesn't sort of squash. That's very, very nice. Love it for vocals because it just tracks things really nice. Now, there are two sidechain filters on this um, they are fixed on the hardware unit this is emulating with the high pass fixed at 106 hertz and the band emphasis filter um, fixed at 6k hence if you reset this with command left click boom it jumps to 6k or it does the same when you do reset with the reset button now the band filter the, let's just explain this um, as I said this is partly a tutorial and even if it was not, whenever I do my reviews and other stuff like that, I always try and explain things so beginners can understand what the hell's going on. So let's just quickly explain this. But as I said, there's a full link to all my full on compressor and compression tutorials in the description below. Um, OK, the sidechain detector circuit of a compressor listens to the signal, monitors the signal on its copy. And if it goes over, gets too loud, it tells the compressor circuit to turn down the original copy of the signal passing through the unit. So the signal comes into the compressor, is split, and a copy of that signal is sent to the detector circuit. Now you can put equalizers in that detector circuit and EQ the copy of the signal that the detector circuit is listening to. So it's different to the original signal passing through. Remember, this circuit tells this circuit whether to turn down, whether to apply gain reduction based on if it's hearing something getting louder and louder and louder or getting too loud. So if you equalize the signal going into the side chain to only let the side chain listen to a certain narrow band of frequencies, then the compressor will only respond to that narrow band of frequencies and only compress those narrow band of frequencies if they get too loud. That's called frequency conscious compression. And the most famous example of frequency conscious conscious compression is de-essing when the singer is doing s's s, 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 too loud hey baby it's super too much s it overloads the mic and you get this harsh s'ing too loud all right so what you do is the copy of the signal going to the detect circuit 
you take all the bottom end out below the treble frequency area that's overloading and all the top end out above that treble frequency area and you just feed only that treble frequency area into the detector circuit when it hears that treble that's s-ing too loud it squashes it it only squashes the s's and leaves everything else alone that's de-s-ing and to do that you'd feed frequencies into this side chain between 3k and 8k which will cover all sdsing for you know both male and female vocalists uh, wherever their range is all right it'll be the, the s the s's that are overloading will be somewhere between sort of three three and a half k and eight k or if you if you take all the, the frequencies out except for the bass end and feed only the bass into the side chain it's only here in the bass so if it hears loud bass it will squash and just squash the bass frequencies and leave everything else alone and if you feed in lower bass mid frequencies that are causing p plosives p p <coughs> where the vocalist says p or t too close to the mic and it's pushed a big bump of air air pressure wave into the diaphragm causing it to boof like that if you just focus in on that frequency area that's p p plosiving and feed the only that frequency band into the side chain it, it will only squash those P plosive buffs right and things like that that's how the that's how eq works on a on a side chain detector circuit all right so on the hardware unit distressor this is emulating the high pass is fixed at 106 and the band emphasis filter is fixed at 6k you bring this in and the idea of it was is it would squash and obviously when you use eq on a side chain the, the harder you're driving the compressor, the more that compression will occur on the boosted frequency or the more the frequency will be left alone that is not going into the side chain, right? The point of this 6K band frequency is you switch it in and it will apply a little bit more compression to 6K, which will help to squish down a little bit extra the 6k frequency the treble type frequencies up there that you might get overloading a bit on something like a harsh gritty female vocal but also do the same on guitars or anything else all right now we're free to on this plugin to use this from anywhere from 20 hertz to 20k so we can point it at any frequency range we like and it's only a little bump right it's just adding a little bump of emphasis about 3 db like that not with a massive wide or super tight q so it's a subtle and obviously the more you drive the compressor the more you hear it but that's what it's for we can point this to any frequency range and it will compress that frequency more which is kind of really cool you can do some really good tricks with it where you you know if you're slamming the crap out of a out of a drum loop or something or a bass line, you can point this at the bass end and it will super squash the bass end uh, more than the rest of the frequencies in the signal. And you can get some really good stuff out of it like that. Okay, so whatever you point this at to, that frequency area will be compressed a little bit more. And the harder you drive it, the more that happens, right? With the high pass, it's fixed at 106 on the hardware unit, the distress of this is emulating, meaning the base end below 106 hertz doesn't get compressed. Now, the point of that is it can be used creatively on any stuff that's below 106 hertz, but really this is a fix because if you have a super fast attack on a compressor, compressing very low bass frequencies, if the compressor is attacking faster than it takes the time of one waveform of low bass to complete, the compressor is is cutting into that base waveform cycle in the middle of it like you can't fully complete and it starts distorting the waveform of the base and you get distortion so bringing this in will leave the base end alone so it's not being compressed and therefore that will remove any distortion in the base end if you're using compression with a really really fast attack it's generally what it's useful but because this is a plugin we can adjust this anywhere from 20 hertz to 20k Meaning we can say, you know, I'll put it at 1.3k, only compress the frequencies above and leave the bottom end alone completely. If I do that with this vocal, put it at, say, 1k, 
the bass end of the vocal, the body bass end, uh, is left alone, and only frequencies above 1K are compressed, and you'll hear a, a lot of warmth coming back into the vocal. Now that the time is gone, I won't be here no more. Can't be depending on, it's time to move on from. Now that the time is gone, I won't be here no more. Can't be depending on, it's time to move on from. And that is a really cool thing to be able to use that because you can you can raise this up to whatever frequency below which is the body of a sound, like the body of a, a bottom end of a snare, the bottom end of an acoustic guitar, in this case the bottom end of a vocal, the bass end. And it will leave that alone. And so that is then going to be louder relative to the frequencies above that are being squashed. And the harder you're squashing, the more you hear the frequencies above being squashed, which makes the frequencies below being left alone come up even more relative to the frequencies being squashed above. And again, this is great as a creative tool to warm the bottom end of something up, leave it alone and not compress it while you compress the frequencies above. Really cool, yeah? So on this vocal, I'm letting that body through and not compressing it and it warms it up instantly. Now that the time is gone, I won't be here no more. Can't be depending on, it's time to move on from Now that the time is gone, I won't be here no more Can't be depending on, it's time to move on from uh, And that on something like a vocal or acoustic guitar is lovely But it'll do the same on anything, right? Brilliant stuff Um when I do drop it out completely, then the bass frequencies are getting through and being compressed, and you see the gain reduction increase because the, the more powerful bass frequencies are now getting into the circuit and driving it harder. Bring this up, and the bass frequencies don't get through, and the, and the amount of level going into the circuit drops back a bit, right? Now that the time is gone, I won't be here no more. Can't be depending on, it's time to move on from. Now with this band thing, I could point it at the bass end, it will squash that bass end, the body of the vocal is around two, 300 hertz, 200, 400 hertz. So point it at that, it'll squash that bass end just a bit more. Now that the time is gone, I won't be here no more. Can't be depending on, it's time to move on from. Now that the time is gone. I... So you know, what I'm gonna do is have it in this optical, not drive it too much, I'll let that body through in the, in the bass end of the vocal and point this at the mids which will just squeeze those mids down a bit and smooth it now that the time is gone i won't be here no more can't be depending on it's time to move on from now that the time is gone i won't be here no more can't be depending on it's time to move on from yeah lovely stuff love this optical mode man it's beautiful beautiful Okay, um, and I've explained this, but remember, check in the description below for a full-on college quality um, compressor and compression tutorial. Now, we've got these two distortion circuits. Distortion will work without without compression. I'll show you that in a sec. But let's just listen to these distortions on the vocal. Um, let's just compress it all the way from the entire frequency content of the vocal. Now that the time is gone, I will... Now this distortion, uh, the second order and third or order harmonic distortion, always described as this is more tube-like and this is more tape-like. Um, on something like a vocal, you'll you'll if I don't overly push that saturation distortion, you'll hear this more mid-range and this is a bit more top and tail, right? Let's hear that. Here we go. Now that the time is gone, I won't be here no more. Can't be depending on, it's time to move on from Now that the time is gone, I won't be here no more Can't be depending on, it's time to move on from Yeah, it's a little bit more top and tail this one Until you really start to drive it Now that the time is gone, I won't be here no more Can't be depending on, it's time to move on from Now that the time is gone, I won't be here no more Depending on so, you know, any of the compression you're using, you can bring in these distortion circuits and give it as much drive as you want to add a bit of uh, gentle saturation or full-on distortion. And we'll look at this on other things as we move forward in this um, video.
but um, without it, this this circuit is still working. If it's rolled right off. Now that the time is gone, I won't be here no more. Can be depending on. And we start rolling it on. You you can hear some drive coming in, but without the circuits even employed. Now that the time is gone, I won't be here no more. Can be depending on. It's time to move on from. Now that the time is gone, I won't be here no more. Can be depending on. It's time to move on from. Now that the time is gone, I won't be here no more. Can be depending on. It's time. It's way subtle without these switches in, but on the hardware unit, if the real lamp's lighting, you start to get some second order harmonic distortion. If you push it even further, and the red lamp is lighting as well, then you're getting second and third order harmonic distortion. So. This unit, if we take it out of compression mode completely, which we do by going into one-to-one -one mode like that, now you can just use it as a general purpose warmer and driver, saturator or full-on distortion unit with no compression at all. One-to-one -one means no compression, right? As long as no other switches are engaged. And I can drive this now. Now that the time is gone, I won't be here no more. Can be depending on, it's time to move on from. Now you can hear that distortion working, right? Now we're just using it as a warmer, okay? Um, it's just emulating the circuitry of the distressor, but you can bring in the distortion circuits as well to add saturation or distortion the more you drive it. Now that you can hear how that's more mid range now. Now that the time is gone, I will be here no more. Can be depending on it's time to move on from. So, yeah, you can use this, this warmer, saturated distorter with or without compression, which adds to its overall, you know sort of bag of tricks, box of tricks vibe. It just does so many things, it really does. Mm. Okay, let's move on, reset. Now, again, I, all the ratios are different. They exhibit different knees. Leaving aside the optical mode now, uh, the two to one, three to one ratios, these are very gentle. They have a really, really long and progressive knee, okay? Two to one, ten to one, and max have slightly different sidechain detector behavior. But generally speaking, the two and three to one, they're they're not just that they're lower, softer ratios, but they exhibit a um, they they exhibit a long knee that just is parabolic, as it's described in the manner. It's like a concaved knee that comes, brings on the compression, brings on the compression, brings on 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 in this constantly increasing and climbing curve. But you don't get the knee coming up and then the leveling out when you've breached threshold. So these two just keep bringing the ratio on. But even if you hammer the living crap out of them, you never get this sort of squishing topping out. Neither of these modes, if you seriously start breaching threshold, neither of those modes are going to go, get back, get back. You're not going over that line any further. They'll, they'll just keep bringing on more and more compression, more and more ratio. And uh, so they're really nice. Um, let's try it. Now that the time is gone, I won't be here no more. Can be depending on, it's time to move on from. Now that the time is gone, I won't be here no more. That's just really mellow compression. Now that you know, a little bit going on, not much. Now that the time is gone, I won't be here no more. Can be depending on, it's time to move on from. But if I drive it hard, you don't get a top end squash. Now that the time is gone, I won't be here no more. Can be depending on, it's time to move on from. I mean, like you can hear it compressing in either of these two or three to one. Now that the time is gone, I won't be here no more. But it's not like a super squash, you know, it doesn't really squish. Now that the time is gone, I won't be here no more. And I can really exaggerate that by putting this, uh, where are we, put this gain, there's a gainer plug in, and I'm going to ram an additional 15 dB into this, so I'm going to hammer the living crap out of it, man, ready? 
Now that the time is gone, I won't be here no more Can't be depending on, it's time to move on from Now that the time is gone, I won't be here no more Can't be depending on, it's time to move on from and, you know, as you bring this up into, into extreme to super extreme amounts of game reduction, it's, it keeps it keeps climbing up in level, right? It... Now that the time is gone, I won't be here no more. Can't be depending on... And same in the two to one. Now that the time is gone, I won't be here no more. Can't be depending on... It's time to... Yeah, it just keeps on bringing on compression, but you never get this sort of top end where it's limiting really above and going, don't go any higher. The four to one, six to one, they got a steeper knee and they level out and they do start to squish once you really start hitting the threshold. Right? Now that the time is gone, I won't be here no more. Can't be depending on it's time to move on. And you'll notice now that I'm in four to one, which has the steeper knee that really flattens out once you breach threshold and um, you start pushing above threshold. It, it starts to really lock down. I can push it up, keep pushing up the, the amount of ratio, uh, the, the amount of compression above threshold, and you don't really hear it get much louder because it's just bringing that squish on and won't let it get any louder. Now that the time is gone, I won't be here no more. Can't be depending on, it's time to move on from. Yeah, it's adding that, it's really hitting that top end squash. Now that the time is gone, I won't be here no more. But these two, it just keeps coming on. Now that the time is gone, I won't be here no more. Can't be depending on, it's time to move on from. Now that the time is gone, I won't be here no more. So really nice stuff. These are beautiful gentle modes. And um, they'll just keep bringing on that ratio. Almost like, it's like infinite knee. Four to one, six to one will start to give it some squish when you start breaching threshold. You know they'll bring the they'll bring the ratio on, cross threshold, and from that point on, then they start to like you know, get back on. No, don't get any higher, don't get any louder. I'm going to stop you getting a bit louder. You know what I mean? And ten to one does that even more, but it's got a completely different character. Even you know when you're using it not in optical mode, right? Because it's got a different side chain behavior and attack release behavior, as does. The two to one and the max, but the two to one is subtle, right? So the other thing this thing will do is if we take that off now, is if we give it a long attack like that and a shortish release, so would, you know, somewhere around there, two to four, in three to one, four to uh, one, and six to one, we get that DBX over easy vibe, yeah. Now that the time is gone, I won't be here no more. Can't be depending on, it's time to move on from Now that the time is gone, I won't be here no more Can't be depending on, it's time to move on from Now that the time is gone, I won't be here no more Which is really nice, and this DBX over easy, over easy was a sort of marketing phrase DBX came back up with back in the day to describe a particular knee they built into the compressor where the 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 threshold the, the the knee the signal climbs up the knee climbs up the knee climbs up the knee when it gets to threshold the ratio doesn't like then come on fully right it curves into applying full ratio once you breach threshold so you get an easing in of the full amount of ratio when you breach threshold hence over over threshold easy over threshold it eases in the ratio fairly quickly but not just all at once yeah so with this long release and short uh, long attack and short release in these modes here you get that vibe now that the time is gone i won't be here no more can be depending on it's time to move on from and that's a great general compression to apply to things it will anything that gets too loud it will it will push it back but it doesn't push it back as a sudden squish that comes on you know, it, it just eases that ratio in over a short, a short climb up in level, eases it in, just pushes things back, keeps them under control. 
you drive it hard it's not completely invisible but it's not you know it, you're not getting a sunlight oh there's the compression oh there's the compression it eases in eases in eases in easy over easy right now that the time is gone i won't be here no more can be depending on it's time to move on from now that the time is gone i won't be here no more yeah very nice indeed now look um I, I, I wouldn't go with these ratios on a vocal, but just to show you this 10 to 1, it has a slightly different behaviour. The side chain behaves different, and this release particularly does. This is going to, like, 10 to 1, 20 to 1 on max. You push above threshold with these, and they really do start to limit. They really peak limit. They're like, get back. You're not going any higher than that, you bugger. You know what I mean? Like, now that the time is gone, I won't be here no more. Can't be depending on. It's time to move on from. Now that the time is gone, I will be... So, I mean, you know, I wouldn't use this on a vocal, really, but... Now that the time is gone, I will be here no more. Can be dependent... But notice something, you know, if I'm going to back the release off, it still lets go when the loud bit is squashed. Now that the time is gone, I will be here no more. Can be dependent on, it's time to move on from... So even at a long release like this, you can hear it letting go a little bit after the loud bits happen. It lets go a bit and then keeps the ratio, the, the compression on. Let's go a bit and keeps it on. Now that the time is gone, I won't be here no more. Can be dependent on. It's time to move on from. So that it doesn't totally strip the life out of the thing if you put a long release on. Um, but yeah, but it's you know, but it, uh, you start really pushing it, it, it will limit. Now that the time is gone, I won't be here no more. Can be depending on it's time to move on from. Now that the time is gone, I won't be here no more. Can be depending on it's time to move on from. Now that the time is gone, I won't be here no more. Can be depend. But we'll leave those ratios for other material, right? So yeah, on vocals, love the two to one, three to one, that constant coming on compression they do. The four to one, six to one will give you more squash at the top when things are really being hammered. Love the optical ratio on vocals, beautiful. And you've always got that over easy thing. All these ratios will work on other things, but um, vocals, very nice. And always that ability to use the, the, the high pass to let the bottom end through, don't squash it so the vocal warms up or squash a particular area of the vocal, smooth out those mids a bit, you know, push down the treble a little bit, push down the bow with the body a little bit if you want to, you know. And this works on all other material and you've got the ability to saturate up and warm it a bit and all the rest of it. Brilliant stuff, mate. Okay, let's, uh, before we leave this arrangement, let's look at uh, the kick. There's the kick. Um, it's got a compressor over it. There it is. Now in six to one, holding on to the release a bit with a bit of distortion. Take that off. So it's just, a, yes, it's a fairly strong ratio. We're not driving it massively, but you know. Again, it's giving lots of attack, letting the front end of that wave through, of that bass kick through, it's, it's giving it plenty of body. Back this off though, or rather roll this on, and it's starting to attack way faster. We get a bit of distortion. Back the release off. It's releasing too fast for the weight for the deep bottom waves. We could bring this up a bit, let more of that bottom through, or use this to squash that bottom a lot more. Hear that? I'm pointing it at 100, 120 hertz. And it's squishing that bottom end down even more. Let's let some of that front edge through. And I can use a bit of distortion. Yeah. That 
that's nice. Yeah, that's got that's got that nice lower distortion growl coming in. Nice. Okay, now if I cling on to that compression longer with a longer release, the, it can't surge back up after the initial boom, the thud. So I need to try a bit more. There you go. Nice. Uh, if I, let's go with the six to one, do it could do the old over easy thing on it and it just, Nice, just a, just giving it a good emphasis of the thud. No, nothing, nothing over the top. Yeah. Nice. If we go for twenty to one, like hard. You know, it starts to really hard limit if we push it. Now I'm really, we're really squashing that attack. Yeah, it gives it a real thump because. It's going way over threshold and it's just getting locked down. Like, don't go over that, squash it down, squash it down. Yeah. Which emphasizes the thud. And if I point this just above those bass frequencies, it's just I can squish the some of that click a bit. At the bottom end through the real bottom end you can hear that real real low sub bass 45 hertz down getting through now yeah it's very very versatile for things like that i'll keep that i'm going to keep this on let the bottom end through but keep that on um, so it doesn't surge back and it's just tightening it up All right, there you go lovely job there um, and then I've got this sub bass. That's got a compressor on as well, and it's a slidey sub bass. Bit of distortion on it. Let's take that out. As soon as I drop that high pass. I'm, I'm telling it to compress the bass and you it really thin out. 100 hertz down, being left alone. Now it's squashing that bottom end. Now I'm in this 20 to 1 limiting type ratio when I start to drive it, which is just locking it down, right? And with a long release, it's holding that lock down. Now right, it's coming back up. So I'll keep the hammer down, which just squashes and keeps the squash on, smoothing the whole thing down, reducing its range, and then you can slot it in under the kick. Nice. Probably what I do here is go back to the kick and um, clamp down on that bottom end. So it's a bit more less boom. So it doesn't clash with the the um, the bass. Let's see that now. because it's being squashed and the squash is being kept on it's squeezing it down and then I can just slot, slot it in under the kick Really nice. 
nice. Really, really nice. Yeah? Okay. Um, that was a long one, but I explained a lot of the Compraxa during this time. Okay? During this little session. Let's move on. Uh, let's load up something else. I'm going to shoot on a banging club type drum loop and bass loop now and then also on some acoustic guitar then we'll, we'll move on look at it um, on um, acoustic drums including its John Bonham trick and in the next session when we're going to look at it on this banging club uh, drum and bass loop um, I'll also we'll also do the comparison uh, with an 1176 emulation where we'll just I'll show you how tight it gets to that 1176 sound like right on the money including the all buttons in thing yeah so let's look at that next Okay, here is another project. Um, and we're going to look at it on like a banging club uh, drum loop and a bass line and an acoustic guitar and some other things. But before we do, let's check out the 1176 emulation I was talking about. Um, here is an 1176 compressor plugin. It's part of the T Rex range from Ike Multimedia. But their emulations are as good as anything out there, right? So this will be on the money for the sound. Okay, now the 1176, like all these old line leveling amps, there's no threshold. You, the more you drive it, the more the ratio comes on, and then you balance the the, the output level to get your output. It's a bit counterintuitive because, like, if I set the attack on a normal compressor there, that is the fastest attack. But on the 1176, that's the fastest attack. And the release is the same. That would normally be the fastest release on most compressors, but on the 1176, uh, that is the fastest. But these are back to front, right? So it's on fast release, fast attack. And honestly, mate, these FET these FET 1176s are so quick. Even if you have it on the slowest attack, it's still like I don't know, 800 microseconds or something. So they're really fast. Now the 1176 has got uh, four ratios, 4 to 1, 8 to 1, 12 to 1, 20 to 1. And to simulate those on the distressor that this compressor is emulating, you use the ratios 3 to 1, 4 to 1, 6 to 1, and 20 to 1. Sounds a bit odd because like 12 to 1, you, you'd think, yeah, but the 10 to 1 is closer in ratio than 6 to 1. But the 10 to 1 has a different sidechain detector circuit behavior and a different character to particularly the release, but the attack as well. So to emulate those four ratios on the 1176, four to one, we use three to one on here. Eight to one, we use four to one. 12 to one on here, we use six to one. And 20 to one, we, we do indeed use the 20 to one. Okay. So um, let's check it out, the difference between them. All right. This is drum loop, and um, both these compressors are off. Okay, so four to one on the eleven seventy six. I'm not driving it very hard. Here we go. And on the Comprexa, uh, we want to be in 3 to 1, and fast attack, and a fairly fast release. Bang on the money, mate. That's as near as you want. 8 to 1. Put this on 4 to 1. So this one, this is the one on. About 5 dB of gain reduction. It's up on about 5 on the meter. These aren't super quick. That's uh, 8 to 1. Let me just put my volume up a bit. Okay. A little bit of and a bass end is starting to come in on this now. Just a little. Now I could raise that release a little. 
but it's still there. So what I'm going to do is just raise this uh, high pass a smidge. Let's say to th let's try it at 30 hertz, just to let the real bottom end through. 30 hertz. Right. Let's hear that. There you go. Yeah, and just letting those super low waves through, not being compressed, it's taken away that right down the bottom, right? Okay, 12 to 1. I mean, that's, that's, that is, uh, that's as close as you want. 12 to 1, 6 to 1 on here. Let's hear the 1176 emulation. drop that high pass off now because now we're driving this at a, a, a higher ratio we're starting to get a, a little a tiny amount of that right at the real bottom end like just a, a, a smidge of real bass end low super low growl right? so there's still a little bit too much on this so let's set that to 23 hertz 26 hertz and that's close enough for me man it's got a super fast boom 20 to 1 20 to 1 let's see the 1176 emulation Okay, a little bit of growl coming on this now, but this is giving less re less gain reduction now. We're in twenty to one, just a bit less. So I'll drop this back a bit. Oh yeah. We're on the money, absolutely. Now, the distressor this is emulating, the compressor is emulating, has a further trick, the British switch, which on this emulation is called GB mode. Boom! Switch that in, and just like on the hardware unit, the lamps lights up the one-to-one. -one. Now, normally with GB mode off, that means you're in the mode where there's no compression, you can use the warming and, and saturation and distortion circuits. But when you bring in the GB mode, and watch this attack as well, boom, it jumps to one-to-one, -to -one, meaning we're in this GB all, all buttons in mode, and notice the attack slams to the fastest to emulate that ultra-fast FET 1176 attack. Now, what's happening with this is, the 1176, it came out, uh, and the British engineers got hold of it. This is the story, right? And they went, oh, I wonder what we can do with this, <laughs> as, as, as us British tend to do. <laughs> oh, no. uh, even though my, I, I'm entirely descended from the French. <laughs> but, you know, uh, yeah. the British got hold of this and kind of went, oh, a, if I get those four buttons and I'll put my feet and, and ram them all in at the same time. I can get them all to latch together. Boom, like that. Known as all buttons in mode or some call it the British mode because it was supposed to have happened in Britain first. I don't know where it happened first. Um, I've got a mate. Um, he's quite old and he worked in Trident when he was a youngster. And he always says, oh, well, I was the first person to use an 1176 in Britain um, 
on a bass. We got one and I was like, let's try it on this. And everyone came running into the studio. What the hell is that? Um, so who knows, it might have happened at Trident that they did this. I don't know. Trident is certainly one of the old studios that would have got one of these uh, when they first came out or first were available in the UK or they could get one over here um, from the States. Anyway, you, you lock all these buttons in and it's not like you're stacking the ratios. You're not getting 20 plus 12 plus 8 plus 4 to 1 all stacked, but it does give humongous amounts of compression ratio and it be starting to be um, changes the behavior of the attack but particularly the release okay so look this takes a little bit more setting up to balance them so I've let's we'll turn these two off these are both off now right and so now the drum loop is playing raw and on the final master output that, that, that the drum loops going to I've got a compressor here and I've got the 1176 emulation. Come on, baby. There we go. Now I've just taken a bit of time to balance these. Okay, because there's a little bit of fiddling to do. So these are both on the fastest attack and release, all buttons in. We're still not driving the crap out of it. It's not driving too hard. And um, this is the sound. Right? This is the one playing now. No, and just notice the game reduction meter ain't pegging up much, is it? Just to sort of just flickery over uh, minus three. But you can hear that bottom end, that bottom end fart coming in now, right? You know? Right, uh, and this is the compressor. I'm not using the high pass rolling off the, the bottom end now because we want some of that bottom end farty growl. Let's hear it. It's on the money to me, man. Absolutely, all these all these emulations of Lem Seventy Six from this, uh, are right on the money. And look, his thing. Someone might go, well, I can. I mean, you might this maybe. I can hear this. Is maybe a smidge more clicky than this one or whatever. But the thing is, you could get four of these Eleven Seventy Sixes. And unless they've all been sent off to somewhere like Vintage King, where they've been ripped apart completely refurbished, completely serviced, and completely recalibrated, they're all going to sound slightly different. All old gears like that, right? So that's on the money to me. But let's drive this harder. Let's give it some real welly now. Here we go. And now the meter's flickering up at minus five. And that bottom end fart is really happening. Like, right, let's go for this one now. Drive it harder. Out of that one, let me just drop that back a bit. But now I'm having to turn the release up more because the all button scene is changing the character of the release on this. Well, that's near enough for me, man. Yeah, so beautiful. It'll do that whole eleven seventy six thing. Really, really good, and that's part of the secret of the distressor that this this uh, compressor is emulating. Right, it'll give you that optical LA two A three A vibe. It'll give you the eleven seventy six vibe, and the all buttons in thing, and it will give you the DBX over easy vibe as well. So, that's the emulations done. But let's just one last thing on this drum beat. Let me just do something a bit extreme. <coughs> I'll put it into 
Oh no, my mouse. Come back. I just banged it. I just went up oh, and dropped it on the desk. These they, they get a bit loose, these Apple mice. And you sort of pick them up and accidentally drop them and the battery goes, I'm gonna disconnect. I'm gonna stick into GB mode. Right. <laughs> Notice where it's extreme. Um and max, or maybe 20 to 1, this is going to be extreme. Because one thing I didn't say is, when I showed you the GB mode, you slick it in GB mode and um, it jumps the 1 to 1, meaning you can do that all buttons in on the 1176 and the attack leaps to the fastest to give that super fast 1176 attack. And then you're on that four, four buttons in thing, right? But the point is, once you're in GB mode, you can use any of the other ratios and it's like you've got all these ratios again with their particular behavior, which is now super exaggerated as if all of these ratios are now available to you in a brand new compressor, which has just had a switch added, which you flipped in that gives it, um, you know, unlimited power. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? So... <laughs> So it's like it's like you now bring the switch in and start using these ratios. It's like you've got a whole new load of extreme uh, ratio compressors. Anyway, I'll put it in GB mode and 20 to 1. We're not emulating that 1176 thing in this. It's just giving us extra gobs of compression. Oh, you bastard. Hang on. And now I'm going to just peg that release. So it, it, it can't let go of it, and it's really squishing it. And then I'll point this emphasis at that base end to super squash that, that bottom end, even though I'm letting quite a bit of it through with this slow attack, slowish attack, and that's really... And, that, and that's giving it sort of like ultra, ultra, super smack. Uh, it's still got bass, but it's sort of like, oh my God, it's really smacking it on the bass end at the attack. Holy cow, mate. And then, and then because we're using the combination of GB mode and this really hard 20 to 1 ratio that's effectively limiting now, this is then gives us massive pump back. Yeah, you can get really extreme with this. Uh, it doesn't work with that baseline because the envelopes are completely messed up against each other. But, but I, I'm just showing you, you, you know, you've got all these ratios all over again in GB mode where they're all just more extreme. They keep their, their behavior still, but they're just like multiplied and way more powerful. So it's like having another compressor with, this, as I said, this, this um, unlimited power switch, you know what I mean? You can seriously, seriously hammer stuff into oblivion with this to get the most extreme banging and, and pumping that you want. So where are we? Right, back on the on the drum loop with the compressor on it. So yeah. So we'll start off, take that GB mode off, uh, and we'll start off with a bit of over easy, right? A bit of DBX over easy, reset the whole thing, and well, let's give it a bit of that. Here we go. Okay, any of these over easy modes on drum loops, they're just gonna give it a good old thump. Lovely jubbly, right? So what do you want? 
It's letting the front end through with this long uh, attack. Nice quick release. Thud, thud, thud. It's letting that bump, it's really emphasizing that thump and uh, letting go quick. So it's not sort of holding on and. I can show you this band thing now. He pointed at the bottom end. And start to drive it a bit more. You can hear that bass end being squished. Or let some of that deep bass through. Let's let it through at 50 hertz down. Yeah, it's about 70 hertz now, letting some nice bass end through. Let's try giving it a bit of distortion. Now that's a that's a subtle amount of this second order distortion, which is just giving a growl to the bass end if I don't push it too hard. Okay, now it's starting to get some growl in there. This one. So I, like, I really like that. That's bloody great sound. Fantastic. Let's give it some much faster squash. And that's bringing the hammer down really early and taking away that front end and sort of, you know, you're not getting that real thumb coming through at the start because we're squishing it early before it has a chance to, to rise up. Rise up, you know what I mean? And if we hold the hammer down, keep the hammer held down longer, then we're it's not got a chance to recover after the initial pushback of the thump. So it's like thump, keep it on, thump, keep it on. And it's just holding that compression, reducing the entire dynamic range of the material, squishing it all down, which takes away all of its level. And then we can we can rise it up, we can make it louder, um, but it's, it's contained, it's really squashed, and it's keeping the squash on with that long release. Now I'm, now I'm extra compressing the bass end, which you'll hear even more if I drive it a lot. A huge amounts of gain reduction happening now. But that's got an inc that's got an incredible smack now, more of a smack than a thud. But we raise this up, we'll get some thud coming through. Lovely stuff, lovely jabbly. Uh, the 10 to 1. Can you hear straight away that oh, 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 is coming up more now, even though we're on this long release, because this 10 to 1 has this release character and, and sidechain character that's different. It's like I said, stepping out of the way, and, but a little, and then backing off. So we are getting some surge back, even with this long, I'll put it in 6 to 1. And, that chicka chicka chick shuka chick up between the boom 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 is not surging back up. Leave that in exactly the same place to put it to ten to one. And you can actually hear it surging up, just that in, that initial stepping out of the way, a little bit out of the way. Even though it's on a long release, it still jumps out of the way and lets go a little bit and then holds it on. Yeah, so it's
But we're really hammering it now at ten to one, which has the effect of once we like as much as we're pegging it here, it's it's hard. It's really limiting the signal from going over, what well, and squashing it like mad. And now I can, this is now sort of giving us our um, a, a loudness of that surging back up because it's it's really we're using this now to you know pump back up or more or less. But it still always has that character on a long release of, of letting go a bit. So try on this 20 to 1, and this is going to really hard limit. And then this is controlling how loud that, and how, that surge back, how quick it surges back. You know, the pump, the pump. And on the max... Now, giving it huge amounts of compression now, the amount I'm driving it, and with this max mode, like it just is hard limiting the crap out of this. Um, but when I start bringing that release shorter, it's starting to distort. Because this colossal amount of compression that's being applied is surging back up, and it's, it's surging up faster than the bass cycle, so starting to distort it. Can't you know if I bring this up, then we're losing that bass end being compressed. It's it's helping a little bit. It's just the way this is set. You don't want it like that unless you want that. You know. So that's just like pegging the crap out of it it really is so yeah this is fantastic on on you can tune your drums man bang them up add some distortion whatever you like so i quite liked it on that uh six to one with a sort of you know pushing towards over easy type long attack and um give it a bit of that second order harmonic distortion just to give it some growl Yeah, nice man, nice, very good. The bass here. That, 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 let's just turn this off. That strange thing is this session is all from when I was demoing Mixbox. And if you have never seen this, <laughs> trust me, mate. <laughs> Look in the description below. There is my full on in depth tutorial and, and review of this. It's an API 500 star lunchbox, basically, which comes with 72 different processors. Like a colossal amount of processors, including loads of filters, loads of modulators, saturators, distortion units, as well as amps, which you don't necessarily used for doing guitar sounds they can be used to all, do all sorts of things There's cabinet emulators all sorts so it's this supreme sound mangling thing because everything's in the same rack you just load up the things and you skip between things sound designing and mangling for electronic dance music this thing is supreme mate reorder the stuff in any order you want get around the back you can gain stage things exactly how you want you can side chain compressors etc etc right bloody brilliant this now this was um, look at look in the description below for the full on review, mate. This thing is just epic, but it's not just a sound mangler and a sound design tool. Everything's in the same box. Tweak, 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 tweak. You ain't got to have a whole load of individual plugins all sort of dragged around the screen and organised and jump between them. It's all in the house. Design it, tweak it, design it, tweak it, and then save it as a preset. Brilliant. But it is also a general purpose mix tool because it comes with not just a whole bunch of 
stuff to do really sort of strange and extreme stuff. It comes with two Neve EQs. It comes with the three API 500 EQs. It comes with the SSL. There it is, the brand knob G series channel strip, the EQ part, but also it's got the channel dynamic section. And because they're separate, you can have them in any order you want before post or or pre EQ dynamics and it's got there's the SL bus compressor it's also got the 1176 the LA2A the uh, Fairchild 670 um, <coughs> and the um, no the EQP1A and all the rest of it so it's a general purpose mix tool as well right but anyway on this base what's giving that wow wow is that I've got this inverse reverb right And the wonderful tube control warming it all up and everything like that blah blah okay i was using the bus compressor on this sound but it's took it's off right bit of that api graphic there and there's my sound so let's compress it now here we go we're in we're in the max mode all right it's giving it huge amounts of compression, very long attack, short release, so it's surging back up, surging back up. So let's give it some six to one, nought sort of average. Let's turn all these off. Six to one, uh, like that. Yeah, driving it pretty hard, good squashing. Squash the bass end a bit more. Etc. I could add distortion, even though there's some growl on that already. stuff mate beautiful 20 to 1 give it some like real limiting keep the hammer down with a long release and therefore I'm, I'm reducing that wow wow metallic surge up from that inverse reverb but if I, if I reduce that release time it starts surging up louder and louder So uh, I'll keep it in that, and then I can use this to control how much of that metallic whack, whack coming back I'm getting along with the drums. Nice. Oh, they're locked together and oh, lovely and tight. Beautiful, man. Yeah, I was thinking you can just tune it and get to learn it. Learn how it works. You can tune it and tune it and tune it to your heart's content, mate. Fantastic stuff. Brilliant on basses and banging loops and all the rest of it. Super duper. Uh, let's check it on the acoustic guitar now. Um, I don't know where I got these files from. Some guy off the internet was demoing a, a Martin. And again, I, I use these in most tutorials or, or, or reviews of, of gear um, and it's again I was using it to show off this mix box and there's the mix box so it's getting a little bit of that inverse reverse and tube um, whatever I'm doing with it warming a bit of roll and classic ensemble chorus then into this really nice tape delay a bit of this general purpose channel strip really cool channel strip I was giving it a little bit of fair child to smooth it on the output 
but that's turned off. So this is my acoustic sound with no no compression. Hey, but not with that drum beat though. Here we go. Yeah, with the reverb. Now you shouldn't really compress the reverb because this whole signal is going to go into the compressor. So I'll just back back that off a little bit. Although you know, you shouldn't really do it. No, why not? Have it go. There's nothing like compress reverb. You can get some wacky effects, mate. Have you ever tried that on on your auxiliary return where your reverb's coming back? Compress it. Um, you know, you can do some strange things, and or maybe try side chaining it compressing it and side chaining that compression on the reverb return from something that it'll work in empathy with to side chain your reverb return there's all sorts of things you can do but we won't get into that so here's the acoustic guitar and um, there's the compressor on it lovely jabbly shunt oh go away and uh well i'm in this uh, three to one you know these two gentle ratios have this almost infinite concave parabolic constantly coming on ratio they don't have a flatten out driving it quite hard by the look of it let's have a listen actually this started life as a pretty it's got a star next to it. it started life as gentle acoustic guitar boom and i've just changed things a little Yeah, so long attack on these gentle ratios, long attack. So plenty of that front end, you know, the the all the attacking is coming through shortly. So let's go really quick, and a bit of a, a little bit of a squeeze to keep it under control if it gets too loud. And that filter's pointing at six k to sort of slightly squish down any six k treble, and then we're letting the bass end through below two hundred and forty hertz, which is very little body in in this guitar below 240 hertz but really nice let's try on a bit of the old over easy san let's reset all this a bit of the old over easy at four to one here we go I can show you that um, thing. If I bring up this and let the body of the guitar through, you ain't got super deep end on an acoustic, but if I bring this up to like 550, 600 hertz, we're going to let that low mid down to base body of the acoustic through, and it'll it'll warm up. And that'll happen the more I'm driving it. If I drive it more, it'll squash frequencies above more, and therefore the bass not being squashed will, will sound louder relative to the content above being squashed. So I'll drive it a bit harder. <laughs> That's just that's just warming it up nice. Now we're letting all that bass through and it's really triggering the compressor. You can hear it really squish now and all that bottom's gone out of it and body. Yeah, nice man. Really nice. This thing's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. If I uh, let's drive it a bit less. Um, if I bring up the release and really cling on to that compression more, then it's keeping the whole thing flat. OK, 
Okay, squashing it and keeping the squash on, which reduces the overall dynamic range of the guitar, right? So it's got less up and down. And therefore it's flattening it, lowering its level. And then I can sort of, if this was in a piece of music with drums and other things quite busy, I could then slot it in and the quieter bits wouldn't disappear and the louder bits wouldn't be too loud, right? isolation it sounds a little unnatural but you, that you know by squashing its whole dynamics with that long held release this isn't a compressor thing you know all compressors would do that but it's just squishing it really reducing the difference between loud and, and quiet bits and then it, you can just slot it into into a busier arrangement and you'll hear it without it being too loud and the, without the quiet bits disappearing that's just a general compression thing, do you know what I mean? It's lovely. The optical mode works beautiful. Let's reset and then just go to optical. This works really nice on acoustics, works on anything, but acoustics are nice. I'm driving it quite hard now and it's you can hear it uh, compressing but it's not super squashing it and it's still following it around the way this works uh, I'm over, over pushing a bit much there applying more bottom end squash to the bass end just squishing that bottom end a little bit more around 300 hertz nice really nice yeah so brilliant beautiful on acoustic guitars lovely 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 okay show that's that bit We've looked at the 1176 emulations. We looked at the all buttons in emulation on the money, close as you could possibly want from a compressor that after all, isn't an emulation of an 1176 to begin with. It will give you any type of bang you want on drums and bass lines, man, anything. <coughs> all right, let's move on. Look at it on acoustic drums now. And I'll show you the old John Bonham trick it does. Here we go. Let's load that up. Right, welcome to another arrangement. Um, and this is uh, one of Logic's kits um, with one of the Logic drummers doing a pattern. Slow beat on a very heavy kit. I ain't sat down and programmed exactly a John Bonham beat from a, from a Led Zeppelin album, but it's, it's in that ballpark, you know what I mean? Heavy sounding kit with a boom, boom beat, right? Now this isn't a logic tutorial, obviously, we're just looking at Comprexa, but just so that everyone knows what's going on. Um, these logic kits, I've loaded up a, a producer patch kit and they have separate outputs for all the drums. So you get a overhead pair, you get an in and out kick drum mic, you get a top and bottom snare mic, you get a higher mic, toms, and there are two room mic channels, stereo room mic pair A and mono room mic B, a leak channel, which is ambient spillage sound from the, the drums onto each other's mics, uh, and then three percussion instruments we're not using. And all of those individual drum channels are routed to the final group bus here. 
So the whole kit is routed to the stereo group bus. Okay. So the John Bottom thing, right. Um, just so you know what's going on a bit further. Here's the kit, these Logic kits. Choose a drum and you can say, I want that drum to go to the room mics. Room mic mono B or stereo room mic pair A. And you can have that for every single drum. They can either be in or out of the rooms and you can choose which of the room mic channels they go to, the stereo pair or the mono pair. Every drum in the kit and all the symbols are all going to room mic pair A. And there is the room mic. Let's bring it in and out. Nice sound, right? But, <laughs> put the compressor on. Oh my days. And we just use the Max, not the GB mode as well, just the Max. You just flip this Max switch and it's it's this was designed it's a it's an emulation of the of the uh what's it called on the the nuke button on the distressor this is emulating and it was designed from the get-go to just you know put it in nuke mode and instantly you get that monster john bonham huge uh room sound it was designed for room mics overheads to give them that massive thing so it's on that room mic pair now and listen to the difference when i raise the room mics up now with this on here we go here we go Beautiful. That's just, and it's just like flip the switch, and there it is. All right. Oh my god. Right. Slow that back down, and let's look at it on the other drums now. Now I've got the. Normally, as I said, all these drum channels go to the final stereo output group bus there. But what I've done is I've got the kick inside mic and the much lowered outside kick mic channel, and both of those I'm routing to their own sub bus. So they both come to here, and then from there go to the final stereo out with everything else in the kit. So both kicks arrive here, or it's mostly inside kick mic, and on there there's a compressor. Let's have a listen to it. There it is. So I'm in six to one ratio, but GB mode is in. So I'm getting that more extreme, you know, where GB mode's in, all these ratios then become just more extreme. And uh, it's, in, it's in six to one with GB mode. I'm pointing the emphasis thing, you know, so it just squishes down a bit more, or just below 1K, and I'm letting the real bottom end through, uh, 150 hertz. Um, let's hear it. If it's switched on, it would help. And I'm just getting a good old kick drum thump. If I if I drop this high pass off, it's washing all the bottom end now. If I let it through. It's less noticeable though because we're in this GB mode, which is more extreme. Um, now, if I this is not a this is not a compressor thing. This is just me. Uh, just what you get with all compressors on the release, pretty much is uh, you know I can use this to if I if I bring it to a short release, it'll bring bring back the shell and the decay of the kick after the initial thud thud has been squashed. So if I bring this shorter and shorter, we hear the shell coming, you know, it, it turns back up and we hear that shell and boom more. All right, I can keep that a long release on and keep the hammer down so we don't get so much of that coming back. And you tune that to taste in the mix, right? So let's hear it in context. So this sounds thin like that, right? Because we're not getting that boom of the shell afterwards. Mm 
I'm getting virtually no game reduction showing on the me team. <laughs> it's doing it, trust me. Let's drive it harder. Nice. I like that. Okay, that's how I've got it. It's, it's going a lot of compression with the GB mode switch in plus six to one uh, and letting, a, letting the real real bottom end through and uh, yeah just not letting too much of the shell come back afterwards so it's slight you know a bit tight okay so there's a kick snare uh, snare top and there's a compressor on there let's have a look at it here we go right well, I've got this one in no GB mode but it's six to one Right, it's one of them ratios that you drive it hard, it'll squish an iron, looks driving it hard. So I'm I'm, I'm driving it hard and getting a lot of gain reduction. But the six the six one will top out. It's gonna squish at the top, keep it clamped down. I'm pointing this at three K. just just slightly compressing that three point whatever k a little bit more um i've got the option to let that base base end through not a huge amount of content in it but bring this release back so we hear the shell decay more So I've got the option of having a longer release, um, which is holding onto the compression and therefore it's not letting that sound of the shell and the wires come back up afterwards like smack, ooh, smack, ooh, right? Keep the hammer down. And now I can tune that to taste in the mix. Here we go. So I can let more of the body and the, sh and the fizz wire sound come back or, or uh, with a shorter release. Or, or hang on to that compression. Just keeping the squash on so the fizz and the shell don't come back as strong and it tightens it up. And I like that. There, lovely. Now let's bring in the room sound. Now we'll bring a little bit of that wire back in now. We've got that real cracking room light thing going on. Really nice. In fact, what I'm going to do is... Uh, Bit of SAR 1R reverb on the snare. I use this a lot, but only for one thing, pre-delay. It's a freebie, part of the time and tone bundle from SoftTube. I think I got it, it's given away with loads of products as part of that time and tone bundle. Um, I got it with the, a Focusrite audio interface, I think. So it's just, it's light as a feather on the CPU and it's got one control for the pre-delay and then one control for the reverb, massive down to tiny ambience. So I slam it on the tiny ambience, which is you know, just just this real small ambience. Put the pre-delay up to about 100 milliseconds and then just give it some pre-delay. And the amount I'm using, it's a subtle amount, you don't hear the reverb at all. And then you, you roll that back in the mix till you can hardly hear it, until it's almost imperceptible, but you're still getting that ba-dam, ba-dam on the left-right speakers, that bounce back from the pre-delay, ba-dam, bouncing back, which just lifts the snare out of the mix. It's a little engineer's trick, man. All right, let's have some of that blended in. Yeah, 
Yeah, nice. Monster drum sound, beautiful for drums. This like all compressors, you tune them, but with all the variety this has got, you can just tune and tune and tune things to your heart's delight. It's fantastic. Now, one last thing I didn't show, but well, let's do it on this kit. Uh, there's the group bus, the entire kit with all those compressors I've put on now um, is coming to this final group bus. And over that group bus, oh my god, there's another compressor. Now what I'm going to do is a little bit of parallel compression with this because there's a dry wet control. You don't get this on the on the hardware unit, but on the plug-in you've got dry wets. So you can you can blend in the compression with the dry signal, or blend in distortion with the dry signal, or compression and distortion with the dry signal. And just blend a little bit in to add in compression or compression and distortion to give you to get, to do parallel compression in the box without having to set up any routing and anything in your door, right? So uh, I've got it in GB mode, 6 to 1, uh, uh, you know, you're going to hammer it now. So let's just do it fully wet. Here we go. With some distortion. That is really extreme. Right, but we'll blend some in with the output, which is passing through. So this is just the dry signal now, and none of this added. And then blend some of that slightly distorted hammer to hell in parallel. Here we go. Nice, let's flatten that bottom end. Let's take the room mics down and hear it more because they're, they're giving a good old pump and hammer as well. Yeah, clean and then blend some of that super driven one in. Bring the room lights back in. See, you always, you've always got the option to do any parallel stuff in here as well. It's really, really cool banana, this thing, man. Seriously. Right, so there you go. Um, Compressor. This thing is just bloody great. It really is. It's so versatile. I mean, it's it's emulated the distressor, which is, as I said, this Swiss Army knife of compressors. It just gives you so many flavours of compression, including emulating old, this very, very key sought after units that everyone wants the sound of. And the ability to use it as a general warmer, saturator or distorter, with or without compression, and all the rest of it. But and this is this is doing it. But with the extras, like the fact that GP mode could be used with any ratio, giving you uh, another whole compressor with all these ratios, but in extreme mode, right? Plus the ability of these two filters to be continually variable from 20 to 20k, meaning you can do a whole bunch of filter sidechain stuff different to the original. You know, I can let massive amounts of the bottom end through and just squish the tops above 1k on something and let all the bass through. You know, I can tune this into a bass frequency and hammer the crap out of it with tons of ratio uh, happening, tons of compression happening, and squash the bottom end or something. And you can't do that with the with the hardware unit. So it's, it's, it's supremely versatile, this thing. It really is. Absolutely brilliant. Okay, just to finish, uh, and these are nothing to do with the door I'm working, nothing to do with logic. All IKM Multimedia plugins have this infinite undo and redo buttons on, on the wrapper. 
no matter which door you're in. And it is literally infinite. I'm going to undo now, really. Undo, 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 undo. How come it's undoing so much when I only opened this project and slightly tweaked this? Because it's remembering all the steps I made in the previous session when I was fiddling with it and then saved the project. It's like... Redo, 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 It's literally infinite undo and redo. So if you ever go, kind of go, oh my god, oh, why did I do that? Let me get back to where I was. Well, you can just boom, 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 boom until you're back where you are, or go forward back to where you were, the way where you had previously backed off to. Mate, this this is a godsend. If only all plugin manufacturers put that on their stuff. Additionally, you get this wonderful bank copy paste thing. Let's turn this off. I'll show you this on the snare. Here's the snare. Uh, let's take that pre delay thing off. So, there's some snare. Now, there's the sound that I've arrived at in the compressor for the snare. It happens that I did this when it was switched to bank B. So that's the sound I've set in bank B. I, with bank B selected, I copy it. I can now paste it into A, C or D. I'll paste it into A. Now A and B are identical. C and D are both on default. Like it's just been reset. So now these are the same. So I can get B and I can go, all right, well in this one I'm gonna have more release hanging on to reduce that wire sound bit more attack, drive it a bit less, and, oh, I don't know, change the ratio to four to one. Um, yeah. Okay, and let some bottom end through. And it sounds like this. And then on the fly, seamlessly, I can switch between those two different settings and compare. subtly different. Let's make them more different. And then I can listen to that in the context of the material and just jump between them seamlessly and decide which one I want. You can have up to four of those. And then you decide which one you want, boom, save it as a preset if you want. Absolutely brilliant. Okay, other things. Again, this is on all IK Multimedia T-Rex plugins, except for a very, very few in the collection where there's something very specialist. If you use them on a stereo track, you can work in mid-side, have separate mid-side processing, or left-right, and have separate left-right if you want. Brilliant. Now, there's one last thing. Uh, which is this link button, which I have not mentioned throughout the whole of this. Because I'm not entirely 100% sure what it's doing, so I'm not going to tell you. I, it's doing something to the stereo image. On the original distressor this is emulating, if you've got two units cabled together, and you set them the same to work stereo, pressing the link switch will lock the phase of them together. Uh, yeah. Um, it's doing something to the stereo image for sure because I spent some time experimenting to see I still but I still don't want to tell you because I'm not 100% sure but I set up a slightly different left right compression on something enough difference so I could hear a difference in left and right ear and then I just hit the link switch and I you could hear the stereo image shift it's doing something but I ain't gonna tell you what because I don't know for 100% sure Thing is, it's not listed in the Compressor manual. They don't even mention the link switch when they list all the features and what they do. All right.
Uh, so yeah, I don't know. It's something to do with stereo image though. Okay, uh, so there you go, Compraxa. The big one. <laughs> and you know, it was right, but I mean, this is partly a, a tutorial and, and a review all rolled into one. I mean, I hope this has been really, really interesting to people. Um, but, but I mean, I really now you, you've seen this thing and you really know all the power it has and all the scope and the range and the flavours and that enormous palette of sounds you can get from it. Oh, there is one thing just quickly while we're here. I've mentioned, you know, getting it. There's the bass. It's only a sample bass. I could get me bass up, but I can't be, I can't be bothered. So compressor on the bass, and I can, you know, I was saying about, you know, you can use the distortion to growl up a bass or something. Let's do it. So you can get, you know, you can use the distortion circuits to do some good old bass growl. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, brilliant stuff. And on many, many other things. Okay. Lovely jubbly. Um, so there you go. Compraxa. Um, and as I always say, at the end of these longer videos, are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? Are you not entertained? Is this not why you are here? <laughs> I mean, are you not? I mean, it's been a long one, right? Oh, no, Mrs. But, uh, but, you know, there it is. You should know it. And it's been, you know, if you're a beginner to all this, it's a bit of a compressor tutorial rolled into one as well. Yeah, but at least, you know, like you should know how to use the damn thing now. Because the thing about this is... This is not sort of super intuitive at first and, and knowing what these ratios do and, and everything like that, you know, but now you know. My advice is give it a go. Get the T-Rax Custom Shop, which is completely free. It installs all the, all the plugins on your door and then you just open one in your door and it says, do you want to demo this? And you go, yes, please. And then um, you try it out for 12, I think about 12 to 14 days, yeah? Give it a go. If you if you're new to this and and you've just got your door for and you've kind of learned it a bit and you've got all the stock plugins and you're thinking, well, I'd really like some additional plugins. Yeah, like I said with the with the Clark Technic Behringer stuff, there's no no, it's no coincidence that they decided to model the LA two A and the eleven seventy six. Those are the two most most sought after vintage compressors. Or emulations of those compressors are the most sought after so if you were to get this to augment your stock door plugins you're getting the LA2A thing you're getting the 1176 thing and you're also getting the DBX over easy thing but way 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 more besides I mean, it, it's just got such a huge scope of stuff it would do and once you learn it, it's very much with compression about tuning. You tune, you tune, you tune, you listen and tune, listen and tune, you know what I mean? And, and this thing is just brilliant, absolutely fantastic. Mmm. Shop. Sure. Mm, run out of coffee. Hope that's been good for you. Hope that's been really, really interesting. Uh, please subscribe uh, to the channel. Some big changes coming soon. If I can get my ass out of gear to do it i've got a bit of a long covid actually and it one effect it has is it just makes you just it takes away all your sort of energy and your vibe to do anything um but this room it's a tiny little room i'm working so i'm right in central london i mean i can almost throw a frisbee into the queen's garden from here trust me mate you don't get much room for your, space for your money but this little room i'm going to rip it out completely rebuild it we're going to put a big old vintage mixer in a rack full of outboard and lots of external MIDI kit and a tape multi-track and everything and I'm going to start doing sound recording tutorial series I'm going to start doing a whole bunch of stuff on it you know integrating external MIDI 
kit in with the door set up different techniques to do that and much much more besides i'm going to get some better lighting and better cameras and multi-camera setup pointing and all the rest of it and then i've got the new website which will be released sometime next year there's still a lot of work to do but uh, so there's a lot happening so subscribe put your notifications on and then um you know you get notifications when something happens and uh get the word out there get more people coming to the channel yeah it'd be great all right guys uh hope that's really really cool and useful for you and i'll see you for more videos soon